Well, we're back in 1 Peter chapter 2 today. So far we've seen in chapter 1 that we are chosen, we are hopeful, we are a holy people. In this section, Peter is going to show us uh, what it means for us to be God's household. And I'm going to look at it under the title, We Are Community. As always, I encourage you to take some time to read through the passage a few times. Uh, spend a good chunk of time praying. Pray that God would open your eyes to understand his truth. Pray for those who you will be teaching. Pray that this wouldn't merely be an academic exercise, but that God, by his spirit, would do a work through this living word to you. And as always, I'm going to highlight some of what I've seen in this passage. The passage starts by speaking about coming to him, to Jesus, the living stone. Um, he is the one who God chose, chosen by God. Um, and what we saw at the beginning of chapter 1 is that we are also God's chosen people. And it's only because of him, as we come to him, the living stone, the one who is chosen by God and is precious to him, so we also can be like these living stones. And just this idea of being chosen, you see Jesus was chosen and here we see that again, but you are a chosen people. This whole idea of being uh, Jesus being the living stone uh, runs through most of this passage. And just as Jesus is the living stone, so we are like living stones. We come to him, we are given life, and we are as stones being built into this spiritual house. And then Peter quotes scripture says, see, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone. This comes from Isaiah 28, where the prophet was looking ahead to the day um, where this cornerstone would be laid, the foundation in which God's new community would be built. And the stone, again, we see is precious. Peter uses this language. This chosen one being precious, the stone is precious. He's a precious cornerstone. And he is precious to those who believe. They are the ones who are built into the spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, and the ones who will offer these spiritual sacrifices to God. But sadly, not all who, who, who come to him or all who meet Jesus will believe in him. And so we see that the stone, talking about Jesus, is also one who's been rejected. And even though he's been rejected, he's still become the capstone. Nothing can change that. But he is still a stone that caused people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. So this section also has um, a description of, of those who do not believe. Those who do not believe, they reject Jesus. They stumble over him. He is a rock that makes them fall. We're told that they stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. This uh, word message is actually um, the word word. They disobey the word, uh, which is also what they were destined for. So not only does God predestine who will be his, but he even predestines those who will reject him. And actually the wonder of the gospel is not that God chooses some and not others, the wonder is that God chooses anyone at all. By nature, most will not believe. They will reject. They will stumble and fall. But God in his grace and mercy chooses some. And those people who he chooses, he builds into a spiritual house, which we see here. And being a spiritual house implies uh, not just the building, but the people inside the house, so the family. So we are built to be a new community. And then Peter also speaks about us being a holy priesthood and later a royal priesthood. And the idea of a priesthood, so that's not just individual priests, but priests gathered together. And priests in the Old Testament were those who had the privilege of having access to God. And we are now a royal priesthood, a holy priesthood. We have full access to God. It's an incredible truth. Um, to be holy, we saw this earlier in chapter 1, that is to be set apart, to be different, 
to be distinct from the world around us, and a royal priesthood, we are children of the king. Peter is telling us phenomenal truths in this section. This is who we are. We are living stones being built into a spiritual household. So a family, the family of God, a holy priesthood who offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. And these spiritual sacrifices is the life that we are called to as a holy priesthood. And we'll see more about that in a moment. But just here, yeah, you're a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy. So we see that word holy again, which we've seen once before. But this time it's a holy nation. Uh, this is the Greek word ethnos. Ethnos, from which we get our word ethnicity. Um, and just as ethnicities often divide our world today, as Christians, we are now a holy ethnos. And actually, that ethnicity, being God's chosen holy people, is what unites us. And Peter says even more, we are God's precious possession. As the ESV says, a people for his own possession. Uh, once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. God's special possession. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. So Peter uses these contrast words throughout this section. So right at the beginning, rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him, talking about Jesus. And then he says, to you who believe the stone is precious, but the contrast, those who do not believe, they have rejected the stone. They stumble over him. Then he transitions back to those who do believe in verse 9. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Once you were not a people, but now. Contrasting. Now you are. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Throughout the section there are these contrasts of what we were and what we now are. And it's all God's doing. God, has, God is the one who's called us out of darkness into his wonderful light. He is the one who's chosen us. He's made us a royal priesthood, a holy nation. And he points to us and says, look, they are my special possession. But then it's very important for us to see the purpose. And Peter gives us the purpose here, that. So why have we been made these people? Jesus, the living stone, has made us to be living stones, being built into his household, this royal holy priesthood, his chosen people. Why? That, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. That is our purpose. We want to declare the praises of him because we've been taken from darkness into his wonderful light. The most phenomenal change has happened. We by nature were those who did not believe and who had rejected and were stumbling about in the darkness. But God in his grace chose us, made us a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his special position. And he gave us a purpose that you may declare the praise of him who called you out of darkness. Now, one more thing just to take note of that's important for us to see is that all of the, the you words in this section are plurals. And the reason this is important for us to note is because we live in a world that is fiercely um, individualistic, where actually we have been called together, plural, you, together, like living stones are being built into a spiritual house. There's a, a togetherness. We believed that you, together, plural, may declare the praises of him. And we mustn't forget the power of being a community who have been chosen and made holy by Jesus, who then together declare the praises of him. What Peter's going to go on to do in the rest of chapter 2 is show how this declaration of God's praises needs to be done out in the world among the pagans so that they too might come and declare God's praises and hear of his mercy in choosing 
and making a people a royal priesthood and a holy nation. We want to see others being called out of the darkness and into his wonderful light. And in order for that to happen, we need to declare the praises of him. We need to tell the world of what he's done and we need to do that together. And so it's really important as you're teaching um, whoever you teach this passage to, a group of Christians, to push what is it going to look like for us to be a community who declare God's praises together. And part of that is going to link back to what we saw in the previous section. As a holy people, the defining characteristic of our holy living is that we are a people who love each other. And we should be a people then who serve each other because we've been served in the most extravagant way. We are a people who go together to the world around us because we want to declare the praise of him who's called us out of darkness. And so I trust and I pray as you dig into this passage further that you wouldn't just leave it, don't only rejoice in what God has made us, but also pray that God would increasingly make us to be a people who declare his praises. May we do that with each other. Let's be a people who tell each other of the goodness of belonging to God. And let's pray that that will overflow from just our community into the communities around us who so desperately need to step out of, or be called out of the darkness into his wonderful light. To become the people of God who have received his mercy. God in his grace is giving mercy. We have been blessed more than we can comprehend and we have been blessed so that we will be a blessing to others well god bless as you dig into this passage further and as you then teach it to others